bags are packed are you ready to go this time tomorrow we'll be on the road riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Children of Erte. Uh, as usual, we begin this episode by kicking it over to Adam to tell us about our sponsors. We have Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Look on the overlay or swimming around in chat, and you will find a code for an Electrum chest. Go and redeem that. <laughs> and thank you for stopping by to watch the show with us tonight. We also have Die Hard Dice, who has supplied our cast with incredible <laughs> slinging slabs yes, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah they uh, they have brought us luck good <laughs> and bad which is maybe what you would expect with you know completely random uh, things that go on their story. <laughs> but uh, but yeah uh, thank you very much to die hard dice and you can get 10 percent off um, an, an order that you have over there by using the code Airte. So be sure to use that and secure that 10% off. And we will also be giving away a couple of $25 gift cards for Die Hard Dice. So pay attention to chat and see when those giveaways are active. And good luck to everyone out there. And finally, you will hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape here tonight because epic games need epic sound. And I am Adam Bradford, CDO at Demiplane, and you can find me on Twitter at BadEyeAdam, and I am playing a completely geeking out Silas <laughs> Jordan. Definitely geeking out now. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Elise Timmery, and I'm a custom artist, stylist, RPG performer, and general creative person. You can follow me on all socials at Elise Timmery Body, and tonight... I am playing the six foot one, 125 pound strong woman <laughs> for his arm strong. Hi, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as DreamWisp. You can find me streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. I am an author, performer. I am the creator of the Accessibility and Gaming Resource Guide, which you can find in my pinned tweet. Um, and I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Flynn. I am Lauren Urban. I'm an oboist and an English hornist and a person who plays a lot of idol champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter as Obo Lauren, and you can find me here tonight playing Neb, who must remember to check all paths. <laughs> <laughs> and hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. I am a motion capture performer by day, and by night, I am a D&D enthusiast. And today, I will be playing Robin Beckett, who uh, you can always turn to when you're afraid. Yeah. And I'm Deborah M. Wool, and I'm the storyteller for this evening's game. Uh, so thank you, as usual, to all of you for being here to play with me, and thanks to everyone at home for tuning in. So everyone... Make yourself comfortable and settle in for the eighth chapter of Children of Erte. So where we left off last time, you all had just been through <laughs> quite a battle with a cup with a, a trio of ice monsters, little ice, icy devil creatures that had come after you when you approached the entrance of the mine, because you have indeed made your way to the Twin, Twin Creeks mining. Uh, the Twin Creeks Mine. Um, and here you made a campfire. You had a lovely fireside chat where you started to bring together some of the disparate uh, you know, pieces of this puzzle, this mystery that you're starting to pull together. Um, and you got kind of a lay of the land of this area. So there is, of course, the entrance to the mine, which was covered with icicles. Now it is mostly cleared <laughs> now that those <laughs> icicles came to life and, and killed a few of you, uh, almost killed a few of you. Um, other than that, there are tracks, there are hand cars, there are wheelbarrows and crates. Um, there's a, um, a trough that heads down the hill into the stream below. You can see there's two creeks down at the bottom of the, the rise on the other side of the tracks. You also saw sort of a path going around the side of the mountain. Um, other than that, 
Uh, Neb, when you went and peeked into the mine, you saw tracks that are covered with snow on the outside, but that went into the mine and some kind of machinery back towards the, the back of it. So you've just finished your battle with these ice creatures. You are terribly wounded and, and mm -hmm. hurt. <laughs> Um, yeah. But morale is fairly high because some of you have displayed really magic that you you maybe weren't aware of previously. Um, and here you are in the middle of the night. It's cold. It's dark. But you have made yourselves a little shelter using your sled, um, the side of the mountain. You've made a fire. Uh, and you are now seemingly uh, at peace. Neb is going to uh, limp up to Feroza. Yes. And... <laughs> Just like she did before when we were walking out to the cave, except yes. now we're not. We're just staying right here. She's going to lean into Fruz a little bit and go, thanks for dragging me out of there and saving me. <laughs> uh, all of you, thank you. That was not at all what I expected to see when I looked into the cave. And uh, Fruz is just going to sort of, like, awkwardly just sort of put her hand on a neb <laughs> like that sort of like pat her too and she's gonna say i mean honestly I, I really just wanted to ask if anyone was in there you all i that's all i really wanted to do i just wanted to i didn't well, intend to and there was <laughs> I guess yeah. the, an the answer I can't was say yes. i didn't warn you <laughs> just say <laughs> I don't know what we're all complaining about because that was completely amazing. I mean, like, you could maybe explain away some giant wolves, like they were eating really well or something, but whatever those things were, those little ice creatures, there is no way that they are not mythical and magical in nature, and so we are in it now. I'm going to wipe away some of the blood on my forehead and go, oh, yeah, we really are. <laughs> As you pull it away, it's, it's, you know, it's crystallized. So it's almost like powder, you know, like blood snow. Mm. Blood snow. <laughs> so does that mean that the snow is sentient? <laughs> At least the ice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. It could have been like a snow chameleon or something. Like, it, like the creature might not be snow but it might be made to look like snow where it can hide and mm. chomp down on people that you know stick their head into strange caves it's true i mean i feel like you're you're telling me i should have known that that was something that was going to happen i really was oh i mean haven't you hide. seen ice creature fairy <laughs> pixie weapon I, creature things i've before? watched a lot Flies. of movies yeah they well, flew. Yes, they flew. Yeah, <laughs> helicopter, <laughs> winged, sharp. I this, yeah, I, I fingernail. Just this, yeah, what I mean, sharded, I, exploding things. Wow, she just I, keeps going. That's a very long name. <laughs> I think I'm just realizing that we are going to have to expect everything, wherever we are right now. We're not going to be able to anticipate anything from this moment on because anything could just stand up and decide to attack us. Yeah, I guess if we have magic, so do the icicles. So you're, you're probably right. I'm going to have to figure out if I have any magic that can actually hurt things. I've never thought about that before. That's a, a weird thought. It's interesting. It's either uh, them or us. As long as I didn't really mean that, even when I said it, it sounded kind of hollow. But, <laughs> but you know, it felt like something that somebody would say in that moment. Well, when I looked inside the cave before uh, an icicle decided to hug my face, yes. I saw that there were tracks in there more of the, the minor um, tracks. Were, were there yeah, fox more... tracks? <laughs> no, they were um, train tracks, like like a oh, cart. Train... Sorry, yes. Okay. <laughs> Clarity. Yes, uh, uh, cart tracks. So not not as wide as a train, but narrower. But you know, steel steel tracks. Okay. Like the I know there's the hand cars. The so the hand action. cars look like they fit um, on larger train tracks, on like the the, the proper train tracks. These are narrower. Um, where you are right now, you don't see anything that fits that gauge. Okay. Uh, so I I saw some tracks, but they're smaller than the train tracks. I don't I don't know 
what would go on those. And then really far down, I thought I saw something else, something mechanical. And then I was eating ice cream. So I really can't tell you any more than that. So there's something that goes down into Emma. Well, we were, yeah, I mean, we were supposed to come in here as tourists and do the whole spelunking thing. So well, maybe that that's... was when we were in another world, I think. But you this think... is like, this is like, it's like this entire place is, is, I don't know, not right side up. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, we got to watch out for ice creatures, maybe demo dogs. Uh, like there, there's so much that could happen here. This place, I, I don't think this is where we were going to go on the tour. My dogs are demo dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Actual dogs are demo dogs. Sorry. <laughs> I could use a demo dog right now. I could Sorry. use a demo dog. Yeah. I could. I could like. I'd like to be one of those wolves right now. All the uh, fur and the yeah. muscles and everything. Mm. Yeah. Um, Silas, a uh, question for you: Like, how did you know to sing "Ice Ice Baby" at the very oh, end? Oh well, there? I I just normally say or sing whatever comes to mind. Uh, you know, pretty much just like immediately. So. Um, I don't know if it is so much what I say, but like how I say it is 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 what I feel like I'm I'm figuring out here because it's like I don't know I was feeling like I, I don't know I felt like Michael Jordan in the flu game you know like when he was feeling under the weather and it's like he he just couldn't play at the best of his ability but he still went out there and dropped you know a thirty piece and 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 won the game it's kind of how I felt right there because it was like, I, I felt like I couldn't do anything else. It's like, all I wanted to do was to, to, to make Neb better. But then it was like, ugh, you know, it's kind of like when you, when you're trying to bench press and it's like that last rep and you just can't get, and I'm just like struggling. But no. then it's like something when I tried a little harder, when I tried a little different and, and I put a little bit of groove into it, <laughs> you know, I was, I, something happened. And again, I felt that little, pull it's like i i made fun of it i I, yeah. I don't i don't know if you caught the reference but it was like an ice man reference but it's like <laughs> i made fun of it and when i did that i felt it like i don't know it's like it, it, it kind of just hooked into it just a little bit and it like it made it mad just a, a little bit but i but i felt like it was it was disappointed in me and and it's like i could i could tell that it was like almost sapping its energy with that disappointment <laughs> Okay, Silas, I really have to ask, have you ever actually met Michael Jordan? Oh, no, 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 no. Like, uh, I couldn't afford to go to any of the games when I was a kid. Um, but I have seen the statue at the United Center. Okay. You just talk about him so glowingly, I thought maybe. Well, I mean, he's legendary. He's possibly the greatest, you know, hero that's ever lived in our world anyway. We might be the greatest heroes in this world, though. I mean, we could be. Could, you almost we, got killed by ice. All be I, I was, <laughs> Neb, Neb holds her ribs a little tighter, <laughs> but doesn't say anything. We may be on our way, though. We, we, we'll get there. That's right, Miss Robin. <laughs> Have you ever used a knitting needle like that, Miss Robin? Oh, heavens no, but it just seemed right at the moment. You, you knitted something for the... I, I'm sorry, I was not awake for most of the fight. What did you do with knitting needles? I stabbed them. It just like I said, it just made sense in the moment. That's she also amazing. lit them on fire. <laughs> you like sling lightning or something now too, though, right? That one I just felt in my bones. I just have to let it out sometimes, you know. I think Harold would be very proud of you. When we were all retreating, you sort of ran in, brandishing your knitting needles. <laughs> covering oh, our man. retreat yeah so sure i think that now we've ascertained that we're here we are we have to decide here we are. how we're gonna get back or what those are good questions i would like to just go to sleep yeah you know yeah. i said that whole 2 a.m thing and uh i don't really know what time it is actually at this point uh because you know I think my phone's dead. And so 
Um, I don't know how anybody would find out what time of day it is unless they have the phone. Um, and so therefore, <laughs> um, I'm fine with saying it's 2 a.m. And, and, and getting some rest. Ah, that's a good idea. Mm. I couldn't walk another step. I think okay. Maeve's already asleep. Maeve. <laughs> Which is why she hasn't said anything this whole time. <laughs> Maeve came back okay. curled up. You didn't know if she was just getting warm or comforting herself. And, and oh. you know, as you glance over oh. at her, just some soft snores <laughs> <laughs> from the corner. Um, so yeah, so the four of you are left. You, you can all go to sleep. You can set up watches if you would like to. What would you like to do? Um, do you want to set up watches? I don't uh, mind. I honestly don't mind going first because honestly, I'm going to try to split some wood real quick. It makes me it'll just kind of get the rest of this, I guess, adrenaline out of my system. I'll split some more wood in for the fire. I mean, maybe split it quietly. <laughs> so we have to go to sleep all of a sudden hammering. <laughs> Silas, I think Feruza could, uh, could chop an entire cord of wood and I would sleep right through it at this point. Uh, but, and right, keeping we'll the fire going is really, yes, really important. keeping the fire going. So thank Sounds you. Sounds great. Okay, hey, uh, so, so Feruza, no after a little while, feel free to get me up okay silas got it. second got it. um we'll need one more if you all want to get eight hours one more person uh, to walk. robin is an early riser so okay robin will happily <laughs> naturally <laughs> wakes at 4 a.m yeah <laughs> so robin will I take those people i'm so <laughs> no <laughs> too, man oh. <laughs> what what are those jeans i missed them um, all right, so yes, uh, tell me, how do the rest of you, what do you, you curl up for, for sleep before Feruza does some uh, stress relieving axe work? Um, you just, yeah, do you curl up on the ground, no. do you huddle okay. do, together? Do you, what is your, you know, how are you going to well, I know we'd, your sleep? We'd put the, the two tents, mm -hmm. we'd laid them out so that people could sit and lay down on them and be waterproof. Yeah. And we've we've got some blankets and stuff, so I think... At least for Neb, she's just going to find half of that tent. Yeah. She's small, and she's going to curl under like her jacket and a blanket that she has and whatever else that she has available and is just out. Okay. And is just no. gone. Listening to the crackle of that fire, the wind sort of whistling you know, beyond the sled. Um, Silas and Robin? Silas yeah, think, is uh, not going to be yeah. in the thick of things, um, but uh, because he he um, he definitely wants something to his back, and mm -hmm. so he's just going to find the the sled or, yeah. or, or something and uh, and kind of you know nestle up there. But he does have he has um, an insulated blanket pants yes. and uh, his his own blanket that he had brought on the trip already, and he's just uh, wrapped up like a burrito. All right. All you all you see is like just the little the little mouth, little bit of air puffing yeah. out in the warm air. Robin. Robin has her knitted blanket, and she's just gonna yeah. probably kind of back to back with with Neb and just kind of curl yeah. up there. Fantastic. So as they fall asleep, Veruza, you stand mm -hmm. and, and and walk out of the the campsite, but just right nearby are the 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 yeah, wood she's logs. Back the car. Yeah, right there, but. Gosh, immediately it's so quiet and clear. And you know, the cold doesn't bother you the same way it might someone else. You're used to it. You're from Maine. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, so it's really, you know, when you're not being attacked, mm -hmm. gosh, is it lovely. It's beautiful. It's nice. And I mean, she's sort of just looking around and her mind is yeah. racing. Because, um, like I've said before, this is for her, it's reality has never included fantasy. So yeah. whereas with their compadres, they've sort of embraced it for her, realizing this is this is what it is. It's been a complete world flip. Yeah. So she's sort of, I mean, she's she's beat down right now. She's not, she, she couldn't fight a squirrel if it came up through with her ex. But <laughs> so she's just, but she has her ex like just in her hand because it's a comfort. Yeah. And she's like just breathing, like watching yeah. her breath in the air and just listening. And one thing she realized is that after that fight and, you know, what she felt surge through her body, um, almost like she has a, a heightened sense of things around her. Yeah. Like she always did, but now it feels like something has changed where the air feels sharper, the sounds feel louder, like even hearing 
the air is she she can like it almost like she can sense and where it's coming from and what it is and it's like this sort of uncanny sense of I feel like if there was danger I would know yeah yeah sort of yeah as, as you you know you get into the rhythm of just you know like log log and the rest of you even if you hear it there's a comfort in it Feruza nearby, there's a rhythm, you know, she knows what she's doing. She's not, you know, she doesn't need multiple hits. She's, you know, it's this really lovely rhythm to it. It's yeah. a comforting feeling. And, and Feruza, you do, as I said the last time, the woods are alive. Every once in a while, you can hear something, you know, even just in this moment, something very large moving through the underbrush. But as it kind of comes out down by the river and you look down to it, your senses on high alert, you see a moose step out, nine feet tall, right? One of the few things that's taller than you in this world. Um, you know, steps out and it's so regal and, and quiet as it stands at that creek and bows its head down to the water to take a drink. Wow. Well, you're a big fella, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, it's way down the, you know, way oh, down okay. the slope. So it's not, he's not right near you or anything like okay, that. You're, it to <laughs> yeah, you're way up at the top, you know, down a 60 foot slope down to the creek mm -hmm. is where you see him pop out. So he's no imminent threat. He's not, uh, but you know, actually he sort of raises his head. He will look towards you. He knows you're there. So you sort of just raise, I mean, at this point, people are talking to animals, things, or she just sort of raises <laughs> her hand. Maybe it'll talk back, who knows? At this point, she just says, you know, in, yeah. in friend, she's like friend. As you and see it, you know, go ahead. No, she's go ahead. thinking to herself, maybe I should wake up Neb, but no, I'll let her sleep. <laughs> let her sleep. You look down, I mean, the antlers are huge, right? This beautiful twisting, you know, bone structure above. As you wave and, and sort of say friend, even if it comes out a little bit choked, you don't even know if he would have heard. You just see the big... <sighs> As, as, as he blows air through his large nostrils, he just sort of paws the ground a little bit, nods and turns and walks back into the woods. This entire place is magic. How? <sighs> and she's, she doesn't want to go too far yeah, from where yeah. everyone is. And right now it's really just quiet. Yeah. She sort of turns and takes two steps, two steps, two steps toward <laughs> the mine. Okay. And she's just sort of looking at it and looking at the outside. And she just sort of is looking at the sign. What are you trying to tell us? What are we supposed to do here? How do we get home? Alive. And she walks back to the fire. Um, back to the fire. Uh, mm -hmm. Give me a perception. Fifteen. As you settle in by the fire, and you you know you keep yourself awake. You're looking at the fire. Mm -hmm. You've got some of the new wood that you've chopped. You're ready to you know keep mm -hmm. that going strong for your friends. And you look at each of them asleep, cuddled up secure knowing that you're looking over them you mm -hmm. look back at that mine and you just think about this this question that you've asked and and you do feel a purpose you know i don't i don't know if if you furus are one for destiny or paths or but you feel right you feel like you are where you are supposed to be and uh when she feels that it's a sort of new feeling to her because she, like, like I said, she's yeah. always just kept her feet flat on the ground, you know? Yeah. But right now she's anything goes. So as she's sitting next to the fire with her friends that are fast asleep, somebody's snoring, she doesn't know who, <laughs> she rustles over for some of the <laughs> snacks that are in the MRE. Yeah. She's like, I've just been feeling so hungry lately. She's just looking at the opening of that mine. Yeah. And she says, you know, um, I understand. I'll figure it out. I don't know yet, but I understand. Okay. I'm supposed to be here. So about four hours pass. You nudge Silas awake. You put yourself to sleep. You can, where are you going to curl up in Silas's spot or find your own little corner? Well, first of all, she doesn't 
silently rustle. <laughs> Silas awake. Okay, what does she do? She goes, Silas! Gosh, what in the name of? I'm about to, sorry, I'm about to pass out. I just wanted to get Why you up. Why would you do that? Like, sorry about that. Sorry. Oh, you don't know how to do anything gentle. <laughs> sorry, I thought it was being gentle. It's just like, she didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I made the spot warm for you. Uh, you know. Yeah. I'll I'll take it. I'll take your pants if you don't want them. Just no. <laughs> I left you some granola bars. I didn't eat them all. Oh yeah, thanks for that. Uh, any of the beef jerky, actually. That's what I was. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, I walked a little bit further. I probably wouldn't advise walking too far, but I looked over the ravine and there was a a giant moose. Not the food, which would be great right now. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it would. And a moose with everything. But uh, otherwise, completely calm. Okay. And when, but, as she says that, she sort of looks over at the mine and looks back at you. <laughs> so when you say that the moose had everything, are you talking like it had everything that a moose should have or like everything, like extra things? The moose? Yeah. Well, from what it was far, but not too far, but I could tell it was definitely a magical, fantastic, large moose. Okay, yeah, so. <laughs> I'm going crazy. I need, to, I need to go to sleep. I think you need to get some sleep, yeah. Maybe I didn't see it. Maybe I saw nothing. I'm just gonna go to sleep. But yeah, all right. you know, all right. Right. harmless. Yeah, so. Faruza? Faruza takes your spot and yeah. is like, gone in immediately seconds. yeah you guys have had an exhausting day yes with, <laughs> with the act to here. wake her up <laughs> so silas what would you like to do with your four hours of watch um silas is going to uh take out a deck of cards mm -hmm. and um he is going to just kind of idly break the deck fl fl you know fan them out so mm -hmm. just a uh, little little card tricks um almost just like very autonomously uh you know not not really uh, thinking about it and you know at some point um he is um he's definitely uh you know kind of humming songs at some point he looks over at where we've kind of stacked the stuff from the sled and sees yeah. his guitar case and then yeah. he, he like almost gets up for a second he's like no that's probably <laughs> and uh and so then uh a, as he is uh looking around he uh he does at one point uh just to stretch his legs get up and okay. he's not going to go anywhere near the actual you know mouth of this mine gotcha. but he is going to try to get angles like all the way through and he is peering he's out of focus <laughs> right now but he's peering <laughs> into all of the places um and, uh, and and trying to see if he sees any kind of creatures, uh, especially you know small uh, orange mammals. Gotcha. In in the mouth of the mine. Yes. Entrance. Okay. Yes. yes. Give me a perception check, please. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a one on the die, which would be. Oh, actually, um, Silas feels a little more perceptive than he oh. used to, um, and uh, it's a zero. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tad better than before. Um, so Silas, you don't know if you're hallucinating or what's going on, but you keep feeling like you see little foxes in like the periphery of your vision. So as you're trying to peer down the tunnel, something sort of catches your eye over there, but when you look, nothing. But then it happens again, and you kind of can't seem to go a minute without having this sort of, it's almost like um, when you close your eyes too tight and then you still see it when you open your eyes. Just little, you know, inversions. And unfortunately, that isn't incredibly uncommon for Silas to think that he sees foxes everywhere. And so um, so he he just thinks that uh, not too much is out of the ordinary there. And at some point uh, he goes not in a super creepy way, uh -huh. but um, but in a, you know, eight feet Moderately away. creepy way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> A subtly creepy way. No, um, subtly so, creepy. So he he is uh, he's gonna you know eight feet away where if uh -huh. one of them woke up they uh -huh. would see Silas just standing over them. But uh, he's just you know like literally checking on everyone. Yeah, just making sure that you know they're still in there because he mm -hmm. is getting into his head that 
anything can happen in this place and they may just fall into a portal. And so it's like, you know, just kind of periodically uh, going on and on about that. And then um, at some point he does almost uh, doze off a couple of times himself, yeah. but he is, um, he, he's doing like the old uh, Sunday school trick that he learned which was, uh, you know, basically like as he's sleeping, he's making sure that the chin is on the, the yeah. hand where if he does doze off, it's going to basically smack him. <laughs> and so he kind of smacks himself awake a couple of times. We used to do the thing like, well, I was, was but we put the Walkman in your, your, on your belt and then put the, the cord coming up your sleeve and then you would sit like, yeah. like this. <laughs> you perfect. could listen to something. That's perfect. <laughs> not at church for me but other yes. other places in which i was <laughs> where you weren't supposed to wasn't be. supposed yes. to be i was supposed to be paying attention but i i was doing doing this but yeah um, and then yeah. eventually when you know the time is uh, now i will say that there is a strong possibility mm -hmm. because silas has no clue about time without his phone uh -huh. um, there he is going to okay. he thinks that it's you know four hours or whatever the <laughs> right. mark is um, and, uh, and then he's going to, uh, you know, kind of be looking out for Miss Robin. And at first he wants to see if, uh, she will wake up on her own. Right. But, uh, if not, he will eventually go and question just because you brought it up last time. Uh, do you go take a leak? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah? I, 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 I would, now, now the other thing is, mechanics. is Silas would a hundred percent justify break? that he would not, go very far okay. because he would not want to, to get out of sight so um, instead he looks for something that is uh, you know uh, a bucket like in nature okay um, that <laughs> can nature be a bucket. repository <laughs> yes okay well there are you do see some some actual buckets that are just yeah. sort of detritus that are oh, you know buried perfect. half in the snow that, you recover one of those make yeah. a little latrine area off to the side yes <laughs> well okay. and Silas has no clue how to do that mm -hmm. and so um, you know we're not triggering any survival checks with this. No. He's basically just, he, he's just gonna basically stick it, stick it well, and other things yeah. too. But okay. like he sticks it into snow, like a snow bank. Uh -huh. And, um, and you know, kind of, uh, you know, comes around and, uh, and, and yeah, he definitely, and he thinks that this is something that everyone will be fine with. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Wonderful. But, but still, you know, within 10 feet of camp, you know. Yeah, he, he does mother. turn away uh, mm -hmm. to, to do the act. Mm -hmm. But other than that, he's kind of like looking yeah. over his shoulder constantly. Okay, great. So give me, you know what, I'm going to roll a perception check for okay. you. User a minus one? Uh, yes. I'm going to tell you just because I, I can't believe it. I rolled a one for you. <laughs> oh, no, two perception oh, checks in a row are zero. zero. <laughs> this is so, so I'm so sorry, Silas. Um, so yeah, so at a certain point, you you're like, it has to have been four hours. It has to have been. Uh, so yes, how how would you like to wake up? Uh, um, so uh, remembering what Feruza did to him, <laughs> um, he he gets down on all fours and and kind of just crawls <laughs> up to and and is like keeping his face out of like where she would wait and, right. and, and then and then first he he just he's like Miss Robin, Miss Robin. And, and he's like whispering and then he gradually this is, this is because, the moderately creepy yeah, yeah but but, yeah. but he has uses he not his, ever been know, around humans before <laughs> well, he, he lives by himself <laughs> um, but, but he also has, uh, just like his phone, yeah. he, he knows that the phone gradually gets louder on the alarm right. and he's got the windows in his home that gradually let more light in. And so he's like, he's doing like a, a, a camping version of that. For okay. Uh, so Robin, you sort of slowly begin to sort of hear Silas doing this, but you have a very finely tuned internal clock. Um, you are very sure that it is not yet time for your shift. Yeah. <laughs> and you're actually pretty sure you're you're gonna wake up right on time because you're that is just how finely tuned it is. Okay, uh Robin's gonna pretend to not hear it and <laughs> <laughs> she's just gonna try to sleep longer. I feel like I feel like forty five minutes has passed and so I was like, that's four hours. Now, <laughs> like, now is is uh, Robin like is Robin showing signs of life? Because honestly, <laughs> Silas would be like trying to—he doesn't know how to take a pulse. <laughs> I 
I mean, she's breathing. Okay, 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 okay. So he can visibly, yeah. She's not so, playing so, dead. She's playing asleep. <laughs> so, so he, uh, so then Silas is just like, okay. It, it, it's okay. I can tough it out the whole okay. night. And then he goes and, and sits back down okay. and lays down. <laughs> Fantastic. So, Robin, on your own, just because you, you know, again, your body is so attuned to your routine and the normal times. And, you know, again, one of the jobs you had in your life, I'm sure, <laughs> required an on the clock rise and clock in kind of kind of deal. So you wake up naturally, um, you know, in the sort of wee wee hours of the morning. It's still very, very dark um, and it is it is quite cold. One thing you did notice, Silas, is that even more than before, if you step outside that ring of fire, you can manage it, but it is freezing beyond there. Um, so yes, Robin, you you awake on your own and see Silas kind of groggy eyed, <laughs> keeping his eyes, you know, kind of barely oh, good, 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 you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean awake? Well, well, I mean, I I tried to I tried to wake you up at the four hour mark, but um, uh -huh. but you wouldn't get up, so I just toughed it out. Very good. That's uh good. You can sleep now, though. I've got this handled. Okay. Th thank thanks so much, and and good luck. And he barely gets that out. For <laughs> you. As he curls over. Robin, what would you like to do with your your four hour? So uh, for, for most of the watch, uh, Robin will, you know, look through her photo album for a mm -hmm. little while. Um, and then after some time, she's going to pull out from her bag. She has a compass and she just kind of wants to hold the compass and kind of, you know, maybe if the sun's coming up a little yeah. bit, she can kind of determine like is north still north is it moving weird is is there oh. anything special about you know what's going on here that would affect a compass cool um give me a survival check with advantage <clears throat> that is oof, natural one and a 17 oh my gosh <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, one thing that's just, again, something weird about you, you've always just kind of known which direction is north. Just again, maybe maybe it's the metal in your hip from that old replacement, <laughs> I don't know, whatever it was. Something just kind of makes that easy for you to feel. And as you look down at your compass, you're, you feel it's accurate, that it's still pointing the direction you expect north to be, which is actually kind of as if the tr where the train tracks continue, as if the train was sort of heading north, um, you know, further into, further up into the, uh, the rest of this wilds. Um, so you, yeah, you don't feel like that is off per your, your senses. Okay. Um, in that case, um, that's, that's pretty much all she'll do. She'll, you know, watch over everyone and just kind of take in the silence. And, yeah. and at this point, you know, Neb and Maeve, if you wake up at any point, you can, you know, you've had your full rest. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think Neb would wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Camping me. is not fun. <laughs> you do. Everything's a little bit stiff, mm -hmm. a little achy. <laughs> you know, it's not, you know, snow and dirt is not the softest. <laughs> you know, and you do, I you used to have. Yeah. Go ahead, Ron. <laughs> I used to have an alarm clock. It was of a wolf. And it used to, it had a saxophone on it. And it used to ring at the alarm clock. It would go, hey, hey, don't you know that you gotta get up so you can get down. <laughs> we could use one of those right now, I think. Miss Robin, I think you you just were one and that was amazing. Thank you. I, I needed a laugh this morning as I stretched. Ah. <laughs> But other than some soreness, some stiffness, there's probably still some little bruising. Like if you were to sort of check things, you'd be a little black and blue and green. But, but other than that, everything works, right? Even that, that, that sprained ankle that you felt and those bruised ribs, you know, you can take a deep breath and you don't feel burdened by it anymore. Um, you can stand on that ankle and it, it, it feels quite a bit better now. You can take it, support your weight. Wow, I think... I think I just really needed a long, long sleep that I feel a lot better. That, how are you feeling? 
Oh, me? I feel like a thousand bucks. I feel ready to go. <laughs> well, I think the others need a little bit longer. I, I don't know about Maeve. I don't look over as Maeve waking up. <laughs> Maeve will sleep as late as she can possibly <laughs> sleep. That's fair, that's there fair. There's no reason to be awake before the afternoon. <laughs> there's, still, there's still no light yet really coming out, you know, even at this hour. So it's still it's still dark um, and chilly. Um, but yeah, so so Robin and Neb, is there anything? You've got, you know, probably two hours left of this shift. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, you know, Basically, Neb. Basically, poking your faces. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go right into the cave. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you I'd like to attack brave. the dragon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No, I want to make friends with the dragon. <laughs> yeah, Robin, then, what's up? You've been very brave on this trip. How do you feel about you know all that's going on? That you've you've left home for the first time, and this is what you get. Oh, that's a really big question, especially for so early in the morning. <laughs> uh, you know what? Right now, it's a lot easier to think about how excited I am over everything, how amazing everything is. I'm really, really interested in getting into that cave and finding that shard. And there's something about this place that just... I'm drawn to it in a way that I've not been drawn to anything else. Now, if you'd asked me last night, I probably would have had a different answer. So I should keep that in mind during all of this. But, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still excited even, even with the the bruises and the cuts and the sleeping on a rock. How about you? Oh, don't worry about me. I I try to enjoy life every second that we get because I know I don't have too many more moments, you know, to to enjoy. So, you know, you just got to take in every moment. Like like each second is more special than the last. I agree. So, and I think that uh your outlook is just, well, I commend you. Never well, lose that spirit, okay? Well, as long as you and the rest of, rest of my new friends are here to help when I stick my head in a place I shouldn't, I will, <laughs> I'll do my best. Uh, speaking of that, and I'm gonna look up, yeah. is it still dark enough that I can see stars? You can, they are starting to fade. Um, and in fact, you know, with that recognition as you, you look, you know, kind of up, this is the big mountain and the sun is gonna be sort of rising up over this, oh wait, no, no, sun's gonna be rising up over this way. So, you know, as you kind of look up at the stars and the face of the mountain, just, you can just start to see a little bit of sun reflection at the top of that. And as you turn back around, the tiniest sliver of sun off in the horizon across the tracks, um, just, just beginning to rise. Um, I'm gonna take a step or two away from the fire. I just wanna mm -hmm. get a look at the stars. Would you yeah. keep an eye on me, Robin? <laughs> just so I don't go too far. I'm gonna stick my face in the stars. I'm going to stick my face into the darkness. <laughs> into the dark. I would like to uh, walk into the darkness. Would you yes. please follow me? <laughs> you don't know, but what I just said before, I, uh, okay, no. Of <laughs> yes, a couple of steps out. I got your back. And I will intentionally walk away from the cave yes. to step away from the fire and I'm still within line of sight, but just a little bit away so that I'm not getting the glare of the fire and I can just look up. Yeah. Um, is there anything you're looking for specifically, or are you just enjoying? I don't think she's looking for anything in specific. I think because this is the first time she's really had a chance to see the stars outside of the city. Right. She's just trying to take it in, even if it's still like pre-dawn and is half mulling over the question and the answer that Robin just posed to her yeah. and just... Lovely. So yeah, so you'll spend the last few hours of this watch just enjoying the sunrise as it, it comes up over the forest. Um, it is 
beautiful, the pinks and blues and frankly, the greens as everything kind of comes together. Um, it's just startlingly beautiful. It's still quite cold. It hasn't warmed anything up yet, but it is lovely. Um, the time comes when Feruza and Silas, you both sort of begin to rouse. Uh, Maeve is mm. going to sleep, I think, until you wake her up. So, correct. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but you all have now uh, enjoyed the benefit of a long, long. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and all of you, as you wake up, not only do you feel, you know, a lot of your, your injuries, your wounds are sort of, you know, again, you're achy, you're stiff, but you're, you're in a better, you feel good, you feel ready. Um, but there's even little parts of you where you feel maybe a little, a little stronger, a little, like your energy has just been sort of like your, the well of your energy is deepened, right? <laughs> Somehow you thought maybe I, you know, previously in your city life, get my focus going before I... <laughs> previously in your in your city life you know before you thought oh well i only have enough energy to like go to one party a week <laughs> now you're like wow i didn't know i was capable of all this and all this is these experiences you've had over the last couple of days has sort of increased your capacity yeah i don't um, know about y'all but i feel good this morning <laughs> I mean, I feel like I used to, I only watched Endgame 13 times, and I feel like I could watch it 27 times in a week. I, I do feel like I got a really good rest. And, and also that sunrise was gorgeous. It's hard not to be inspired by that. Wait, where's Maeve? <laughs> Under that pile of blankets. Yes. <laughs> is she really is. She's snuggled up. up She's or... got... Her oh, are you volunteered? Covered by her winter jacket <laughs> and a hat, like all of her winter gear, and a hood which is tied tightly. <laughs> yeah, like she's her feet are sticking out, bundled up as warm as she can be, and is just out. <sighs> I'll wake her up. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Okay. No, no, no! I mean, uh, no, no! Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you're you're great at waking up people. All right. Yeah. Actually, for Ruza, when she sits up, you know, due to this like heightened sense of everything, yeah. the sun is a little too bright. Okay. Everybody's a little voices are a little sharp. She's like this. What was that? What was that? Do you guys hear that? Maybe not. It's the morning, right? Uh, are we still here? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. We haven't figured out where here is yet, but we're still here. Is the mind still there? <laughs> yes, look over. still there. Bruiser, yeah. are you okay? Yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, th this is going to sound really weird, and I'm sure you guys can relate. Ever since yesterday, I just feel like everything is palpable. Even like I feel the air, I feel, I hear sound, everything just looks a little brighter. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe it's a result of being where we are, but it's so. It's so, ooh, did you hear that? It's like we oh. walked right into a Van Gogh. <laughs> yes, that's ex this, that is exactly what it feels like. I feel like I could rip a tree out of the ground just by grabbing it. Is that weird? Uh, no. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. I mean, are you asking in relation to the last 48 hours or in the relation to the rest of our lives? Because it really depends. Yeah, I, I guess everything. It's, it's weird either way, but yeah. great. Like <laughs> to clarify, outstanding that you feel that way, but it is weird. Yes. I mean, do you want to? There's been something I've been wanting to try. And Fruza looks over at Silas. How much do you weigh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you don't ask a, a man never, how much they weigh. Never does. <laughs> All right, never mind. It's I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely. Let, let, let's say I'm somewhere between two hundred and fifty and three hundred, like somewhere in there. How much do you, can you bench press? Do, you, do I mind I don't what? Bench press anything, Silas. Before this, I mean, you can't come to someone and say, "Do you mind?" and then not explain what the thing is that you're going to do. Uh, at this point, Robin has like gone over to Maeve. And like, Maeve, Maeve, you've got to see it. You've got to see it. Watch. 
<laughs> just, just wait, just wait. You're gonna love this. Maeve sort of like one eye half open. <laughs> uh, question, Maeve: Is this the soberest you've ever been, or in a, in a while, or, or where, uh, where are you? First thing in the morning. Oh. I mean, <laughs> less hangover, maybe okay. than normal. However, I got beat up. Oh, you just yesterday. Yeah. Someone else. Six <laughs> in one. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Uh, yes, Veruza, oh, Silas, continue. Yeah. So Veruza's looking at Silas, and she's like, like, sort of grabbing his shoulders, like, patting him on the side, like. Are we going to dance, or? <laughs> Silas, I've never done anything like this before. Hold on. Me either. <laughs> And she's gonna um, just start breathing. And Silas, if you're looking in her face, you might see the faintest sort of like lightning bolts in her eyes. Your eyes, eyes are sparking. Bit. What? What are uh, you talking about? Uh, yeah, like your, I, I don't know. I don't know. Your eyes are sparking. My eyes were sparking? No, like what does something... that mean? Barking? Did you say barking? No, no, sparking. no, no. Like, it's like they, like, like, I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain it, Feruza, but like they're doing something. Really? Yeah. What were you gonna do though? You're just pat my shoulders, or? Me no, rolls over gonna... and turns around and goes, "That's the worst <laughs> pickup line I've ever heard in my life." <laughs> Maybe uh, you're awake. Like everybody saw her eyes, right? <laughs> see her eyes. Did did we? It's pretty far away. I would say just Silas. Okay. Hey, everybody. Whatever. I don't. I have no clue what she's about to do. Like, apparently, it involves you know probably some kind of physical manifestation of whatever she's feeling right now with my body in, in some way. But but not in a weird way. But like. Uh, but everybody, come stand close and look at her eyes. Should I try it again? Well, yeah. I'm but wait on everybody. Wait, wait for everybody to come close. I'll I'll walk on over. Okay. What? What are you like, trying what, to do? Watch your eyes real close. I'll watch your eyes, but also, what are you trying to do? <laughs> I was, uh, she sort of, Furza adjusts her glasses and puts yeah. them on her head. I was going to attempt to lift Silas off the ground. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> All right. Huh? Now, this is keeping in mind that Furza is 6'1 and 124. You know what that <laughs> looks like? <laughs> yeah, she's, you, she's very, very Frank skinny. Man, just, Tall, yeah, very long yeah. limbs, you know, doesn't, you can't really see too much, like, meat right. on the bone, so it seems crazy. And then Silas is probably around six feet as well, right? 5'11". Uh, yeah, 5'11", yeah, but, you know, uh, tall himself and has, you know, good good padding and, and uh, you know, working well for you padding. in the, in the cold so here. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a good padding. Oh, did you mean clothes or? No. <laughs> so, Firuza, go ahead and give yes. me an athletics check. Okay. She starts breathing again. Yeah. And when she starts breathing and she's just concentrating on her hands, you see her eyes start flashing again. Come on, Delaney, we're myself And there. then uh, Silas under his breath is, it just uh, says, better clinch up legless. <laughs> 22. It's a 22. <laughs> so you your muscles that you didn't even, I mean, you knew you had muscles from, you know, being a lumberjack, but um, <laughs> but something about it, they just kind of begin to rise. You lift him about a foot off the ground using nothing really but your biceps and your back. And he just sort of hold him there and release. And he just sort of <laughs> falls to the ground standing now in the snow. And you do, you, you look at your, your slender arms and what they've just accomplished. Silas instinctively reaches out to like feel her muscle. <laughs> <laughs> you like it like this. You're like this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this time since we were watching, did we see your eyes spark? You did, yes. If you were paying attention, you saw her eyes. You, you it's saw almost it, right? like like if you see those those you know images of lightning strikes from a distance, it's like you saw that in her iris. Lightning strikes in her iris. Yeah, Silas was describing it pretty well. That's, there's like electricity in your eyes. What is going on? Magic. Apparently you have magic muscles. <laughs> magic muscles? <laughs> Title. <laughs> <laughs> 
Neb, you have given us a number of episodes. Seriously, I'm like, Neb is like the best, like. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to provide. So, so, like, so what were you thinking about? What were you, what, what were you trying to do? Just how heavy I do? was, right? What? That's what you were thinking, how heavy I was. No, I wasn't at all. I was just thinking, like, I'm, I, I was trying to think, like, I, I know this is something I, I want to do. I want to, I want to pick Silas up. And that's, right. that's what I thought. That's normal. Yeah. I don't know. And it just, it just, you, were, you didn't feel that heavy to me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, now I'm glad that you didn't try to rip the tree out because you probably would have, and then we would have felt bad. I, 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 I after si Silas told me that I woke him up pretty roughly, and that made me think that maybe I didn't realize how hard I was, like, touching him. So that made me. Maybe want to try it. So maybe to try that's... to touch me harder. Okay. No, not touch you harder, but try to pick you up. I was doing... Well, you did it. <laughs> so I guess that's where now do my magic. Do <laughs> yeah. You do. You'll be sorry. I'm very. And sorry, all this magic it. is all well and good, but does anyone have coffee? much more important at the moment. I wonder if I think really, really hard like Feroza did if I could like make coffee. And manifest <laughs> some coffee. And please. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, because why not? I'm gonna just think really hard. I'm gonna hold my hands together and go be like, coffee. Um, maybe it'll work. No, you, you might need to dance a little bit. Like, work less than... <laughs> well, I think what happens is she's thinking really, really hard about coffee. Yes. And then it kind of turns into just breakfast, just something to get us going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a fleeting thought in her head, like, "Oh, don't people don't people go out into the woods and like go forage for berries and stuff?" And berries actually sound really good. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there are just ten plump, delicious berries in her outstretched hands. Not not uh, not uh, good berry beans of any kind. <laughs> Good berry. <laughs> Colombian uh, goodberry beans. That's a higher level spell, and I'm I haven't sorry, learned it. Have if, if, they, if there are, Maeve takes all of them. <laughs> Just in the hopes of a little You're caffeine. Fine. Once I get really, really powerful, I can do the chocolate covered coffee. Oh my god. Oh, great. Oh. Oh, uh, yes, berries. You have 10. That's how, and they, they, they let your, your spells ca upcast by yeah. one. <laughs> you yeah. see the fabric of the weave. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get haste cast on you as soon as you do. Oh. Well, what are those? I think we need to invent this spell. If we do, we badly, badly do. <laughs> I, I have often a thing where I want to do like it's funny. You did bakery because I want to do like a whole like list of like baked goods that are are um, you know magically induced as Rem items for a game. Maybe we'll do that. When we're done, point. remind me to tell you about my Martha Stewart. Amazing! I think we should, we should do like a like a pastry book of I, yes. um, children of Erte. I honestly, Magic honestly, pastry. I have homebrewed uh, create yeah. breakfast and coffee. I do yeah. have that as a homebrew spell. <laughs> but that. at this moment, at this moment, all that is manifest is, yeah. is ten. And uh, what I've always pictured good berries to be are like giant, round, almost uh, almost cartoonish. Okay. <laughs> and that's what kind of appears in her hands. Oh, what that's not coffee, but that's kind of neat. How what did you do that? Uh, well, I was trying to do coffee, and that didn't work. And then I was trying to do breakfast, and that didn't work. And then I thought, oh, you know, if if we're hanging around in the forest, we're going to have to learn how to forage for food. Don't people forage for berries? And then berries just sounded really good. And I thought really hard about berries. <laughs> Want to try? <laughs> and, so, and, and so you just dreamed up some berries. Well, are we? I don't think I'm dreaming right now. I think I magicked up some berries. Yeah, I'll pinch you out of thin air. Ouch! Uh, I'm it's glad that you're power getting those two fingers. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm glad that you're getting muscles everywhere. Over your muscles because uh, <laughs> there's not much there. Here, here, Feruza, have a berry. Uh, how do we know they're not poisonous? Like, Why I was going to say, up? someone should try it. I wasn't I'll, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. Berries. It's okay. I've got an, an, an iron stomach. Iron gut. What, what color are the berries? berries? Oh, what color are the berries? They're red. Red. Red means danger, but I am all in it. 
They're classic red. <laughs> so Silas takes one. Feruza, you were offered. Did you did you say you were going to take one? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, Robin, to, do, do you, you want a berry? Oh, yes, please. There are three, you said? Three? I have no, ten in my ten. hand. hand. Oh, okay, so we all take one then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, yeah. Whoever wants one can take one. <laughs> yeah. Whoever eats mm -hmm. one, uh, immediately all of that, because you woke up tummies growling, um, mm -hmm. parched throat, especially breathing that cold, dry air all night. And as soon as you pop one of these berries, it's like, like wonderful, warm liquid just sort of running down your throat and, and you feel it like drinking, you know, like a good, like thick, hot cocoa as it kind of grows, but it has that raspberry sort of slightly tart, slightly sweet flavor as it goes down your throat. And then once it reaches your stomach, it just warms your entire belly and all of that hunger goes away. Oh, this would be amazing in a scone. I yeah, but that, you that's could do like a, no, like go, a go ahead. Cranberry Mike. vodka. Type of thing, <laughs> I mean, actually, it's like a really lovely cocktail. Uh, maybe I can't summon uh, liquids. Maybe I can only summon solids because the coffee didn't work. But this is, I mean, do, do you all feel that? Yeah, it's like the books yeah. had it wrong, though, because the books always talk about, like, you know, bread. It's like bread. It's like limbus. But this is like the berry form of elf bread. Mm. Imagine if you made this into a jam and then put this on bread. On Let Limbus. Yes. <laughs> You'd be so full. Like you wouldn't have to eat for weeks. Is that how that works? I don't really want to find that out because I like food a lot. But... Well, I have five more and I'll eat another one. Okay, you eat another one. Uh, same sensation. It's this lovely sort of satiating, warm feeling as it then fills your belly. Um, but you don't feel more or less full than that. It's still delicious, but not really any more full than before. Hmm. Lovely. Well, perhaps we should save them for later. Yeah, I think in that's case. a good idea. Well, can you just like do that again, or just think up something and they, it appears? Or... Um. Well, I feel like if I'm gonna do that, I should do something other than berries. What else? <laughs> think yeah, like think a... of uh, Action Test Comics it. number one. <laughs> Silas. I don't, I don't know what that I mean, if you could show me a picture, I can try. Silas immediately starts to draw on the snow. Um, and um, it's basically a recreation of the, the cover of a super powered <laughs> character holding a car saving someone. Oh, um, give me give me a, a dexterity check for that. <laughs> it looks like crap when he draws it. He has no idea. Yeah. <laughs> that is a 21. Uh, I rolled an 18. Still, it's still in snow. Uh <laughs> with a stick but you get creative like you get some of the like uh uh you know uh charcoal from the fire a little bit that's left there and try to fill in something so there's a little depth to it um and you know anyone who knows the cover would be you know fairly impressed that you could make something like that out of snow unfortunately for the rest of the group who does not know what action comics number one looks like <laughs> it looks cool but they're not getting the detail you know well, let me see if I can just like summon comic books. Maybe, maybe this just did like a. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. At least something off a bargain bin, probably. Bargain comics. No. Books? I'll, I'll go through a bunch library. of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and nothing happens. Nothing um, else seems to pop up. Yeah. Hmm. So, just a reminder we've got a, a whole mine here. Yeah. Uh, do we want yeah. to bring some things we can light on fire? Should there be more of those creatures in sight? That's probably a good idea. Also, yeah. do you remember when we were being told about the mine and how it's there's there's a lot of shafts and tunnels and things apparently? Yes. Yeah. How are we going to figure out where to go? Maybe we don't. She Maybe we go. don't go into the mines. Do we try and map it as we go? We gotta, we gotta find the mirror shard. Like, don't we think that one of these is in the mine? Did... I, yeah, but uh, Robin, do you think it might be just near the mine or outside the mine? That I don't know, but I know there is a safer route. It seems this path over here that doesn't go into the mines. 
<laughs> Just Which... throwing that out there. <laughs> Which oh, path? You... So you there is want... there is a path that goes, you know, sort of around the side of the mountain, oh. um, away from the tracks, but also away from the mine entrance, kind of round up over the edge. I mean, I'm willing to try anything because as much as we we all kind of assumed the mine, but all we saw was just a dot in this location. Well, I'm we... curious about what happened that would make it all disappear. Everything all the, that was the inside. Gold Maybe it was those ice monsters. So we have oh. to choose between Moria or Karadras. Who, what, what kind of, what are those? Pies? <laughs> Is that from the... <laughs> I'm starving. But I didn't, I... I didn't read all the books, so I don't know if I get that reference. Yeah. I get so half of it. It, okay. it. It's just like dangerous either way is what I'm saying. But in an exciting way. <laughs> well... If we go into the mine, eventually it sounds like we're going to have to do some spelunking? Maybe we take the pass that Miss Robin's talking about and go around, and then if we don't find anything interesting, then we just go in the back door of the mine. It's got to have a back door, right? <laughs> what? The mine is a shopping mall? Door. It's not going to have a back door. <laughs> I don't think. It might. Yeah, with all those paths, perhaps leading to the, the village. When Maeve says that something about the word paths, uh -huh. you see Neb's eyes narrow. Actually, you know, maybe we should try the path first. We're not in any hurry and I think that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I'm definitely not in a hurry to go chasing what's ever in the mine. But one thing I wanted to mention was during my, my watch, I mean, I definitely feel things more, I suppose, but something was telling me that we, we have to follow whatever we are on. We're in the right place. I don't know where that came from either. I mean, I'm hearing things, I'm seeing things. I don't know, but. So we're being told to follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> I get to the scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> There's no pl place like home. <laughs> we're not in Kansas anymore. No, we are not in Kansas. <laughs> we lived up for six months and it was not a. So we're in the right spot. So certainly not Kansas. Kansas. They're not usually. So why don't we split like up and do both? Split up? That yeah. never works in um, movies. I think we're doing horror movie rules here. You don't go off alone. You always have a buddy. I'll be right in back. In fact, <laughs> I don't even think we should take watches alone, just in general. I I absolutely agree about the let's not split up. There's not a lot of us, and if we if any. If we split up, we're a two and a three. And if the rest of you hadn't run to Farouz and I last night, we we would have been in, we would have been killed. So I don't want to. We're stronger together at this point. Right. Then it's settled. We'll take the path. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling spry Robin this morning. Starts, starts walking over that. I don't right? know how she does it. Miss <laughs> Robin has spoken. <laughs> Should we just leave our stuff, or? Well, no. We can... Oh, I was going to suggest we at least leave the, the all of the gear that we need for splunking. We can like hide it under the the tarp oh, because fair. Well, but if we just if we find a back entrance, did we perhaps mm. want to go in? That's true. We can carry some of it, just the essentials. And you see uh, Silas starts to go over there and is grabbing some of the I mean, we stuff. have our friend Firuza here who apparently can carry anything. So <laughs> it would seem that giving her... <laughs> uh, carrying these things might not be quite as difficult. What do you think, Firuza? I call piggyback. Before. I mean, are we going to... I guess walk around or are we gonna use one of those little cart things that we've seen and like is there a way to do that 
there's no cart tracks that go on this path that Robin is pointing out. Oh, um, okay. There's the train tracks. There's some tracks that come off of that, that these hand carts are on sort of a switch track. Um, and mm -hmm. then there's what uh, uh, Neb described, which were smaller sort of um, mining cart tracks uh, you know, that go into the mine. Um, but those are mostly covered with snow, except right inside. So, so this, this we... path is just like a, you know, well-worn little path on the, on the side of the mountain. So, right, so in ahead, terms, Silas. is there is there anything outside of the cave now that we have daylight? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking around the outside of the cave, looking at the post and lintel, right. is there anything that we can see today that we could not see at night? New perception check. Fifteen. Fifteen. So yeah, as you kind of approach now, um, you know, and most of the icicles are gone, as you maybe sort of <laughs> knock at one, everything, nothing <laughs> leaps out to catch you. Um, now you look in and, and with the, the sunlight, now it's like directly behind you. So it is just lighting up all the way down into that, that mine uh, uh, space. You can as well see that as it goes in, the snow drift goes away. You see those, you know, narrow cart tracks that lead back. You even see a cart way back, kind of turned on its side towards the back. But all the way at the back of this cave, about 50 feet in, um, and you can see it's it's low. It's been mostly what looks like sort of hand dug and carved out or with, you know, small tools. Um, at the back, you see a cable running from ceiling to floor. And as you look, there's a platform with a, a sort of uh, mechanical um, lever sticking up out of it at the back. You're pretty sure it is a mining lift. <laughs> An elevator. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, this that Robin would require like... some sort of power, wouldn't it? Like the power, like <laughs> or. But I mean, I suppose that could fuel it, but I was thinking more like electricity. Really? Oh, she apparently has that too. Yeah, Miss Robin, you want to <laughs> zap a thing? Can you just zap a thing? Well, yes, I suppose, but I don't know if that would help in this situation. Hmm. I mean, Miss Robin hasn't steered us wrong yet, so it's only been a day. But yes, <laughs> maybe <laughs> give her a chance to <laughs> two steer days. Wrong. Two days. I trust her completely. <laughs> So, so are, are you entering into, you're going up to this, the mining lift at the back? So far, Maeve has just pointed out that she thinks there's a lift back yeah, there. So I you was guys just looking, I was not in. saying that we need to yeah. go take, take yeah. the cave route. I was just seeing what was yeah. there in case there was something we didn't catch yesterday. All I'm saying is, you know, you, we stuck our noses into this mine and almost lost our lives. So if we were to go any further in, I just don't think we could handle it. Not at this moment, at least. The mine will still be there, you know, as we grow and find ourselves in this world a little bit more comfortably. Just throwing that out there. So you're telling so us it's, it, role, sort of? It's like we're hitting up against a boss that we can't beat yet. And then we have to go kill like a whole bunch of like rats. And Are we going to have yeah, 55 hours of grinding up. first? <laughs> Yeah. Let so, me go yeah. get a bowl of ramen and my drink before uh, we start doing that. Oh, no, I don't. I don't want to kill a bunch of rats. That's, that's well. No, I'm just saying we we in the sewers and you'll always lose right before your save. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. So we've got to make it from this campfire to the next campfire. Well, we just bring the campfire with us. I mean, yeah, I mean, we start. A, <laughs> I, I meant what? we. We just I start mean, a new fire. We, I I said that wrong. I was camping. I like to take out the pocket watch. Yes, that mm -hmm. I got from the uh, one with vines on it. Gloria's room, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With, which has vines on it. Um, and I would like to take a look at it mm -hmm. now that we're in the light. And is this visible to everyone? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you take it out. You pop it open. It's not running. It, you know, it hasn't been wound. It has to be wound, right? It has to I be can wound. wind it. You can wind it. Yeah, as you wind it up, it starts to move. 
Uh, it seems to be in good working order. Um, nothing around you shifts or changes or anything with the, the use of it. So far, it seems to be an ordinary watch. And did I, I saw the one that Gloria had, right? Um, Silas, you took it out to check I it believe, out? I well, believe, you can help me remind, but I believe you, Silas was real quick about it, but I believe you rolled well enough to like peer over his shoulder, if I remember. You did the whole I thing where I you... Got a, I might have got a glimpse at it, yeah. but I know Silas was the one who got a closer yeah, examination Silas of really it looked and, at and it. pickpocketed it yes. at one point. <laughs> But Gloria had it out and was looking at it. She's, yeah, she, you have seen it. her. You know that she had a pocket watch herself. This yeah. this is a little bit different than I remember hers looking previously, isn't it? Because hers had a, an aquamarine stone yes. in it and Silas, waves or something. As you remember back, the, 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 the pocket watch that you took off of Gloria had like a wave motif and a, and a little aquamarine stone on it. So it's not the same walk. Uh, so what, what you got there, Maeve? It's a... It, a watch. Where'd you get it? On the train. As we huh. were sort of running around. Where did you get it? On the train. I in one of the rooms. Who's I figured. I figured. Look, electronics are not working. My my Apple Watch at some point is going to run out of batteries. It seemed logical to have some sort of way to tell the time. Uh, it was in. It was right. in the the ladies' room. Not, not the ladies' room, the ladies' room, but the room that the ladies were staying. <laughs> oh, okay. That's weird, though. Like, can can I see it? And I hold it up. You can look with your eyes, not with your hands. Oh, come on. Like, what, why would you not trust me at this point? We've been together two days. And... <laughs> so Silas, Silas is going to walk up. We've been together two days, like, for about half of them. <laughs> We've been... Silas is going to walk up very close, though, yes. and, like, uh, look at it and um as long as he recognizes that it is indeed different uh, he mm -hmm. says that's really weird because that is not like that's a different watch so i wonder if did How augie so? have one what, what's the difference here well well no because like, that's what i thought too but yeah no this is i you know i here, I, I, you I got a good look you know take a look and i hand it to him <laughs> And I'm looking at it, and I just start explaining the differences between what I remember from Gloria's watch, the wave motif, yeah. aquamarine, and um, and it, honestly, so it's like, I, I wonder, and he hands it back to me, yep. he says, I wonder if Augie had one of these, because that doesn't look like Gloria's. And is it, a, are they vines like grapevines, or are they vines like ivy? More like like Ivy. Okay. Well, it's good that you picked it up because, and I'll pull up my phone. I was going to just basically turn off everything except for the camera. And, and as, Silas as pulls I said, out I have his a solar watch. charger. Mm -hmm. But you pull out yours? Okay. Yeah, well, 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 yeah, Silas just pulls out his and he says, yeah, unfortunately, mine doesn't work. <laughs> it's just like, like I wind it and wind it and it doesn't do anything. What does yours look like, Silas? Um, so Silas has one that has a, um, it is a uh, a sun and a moon on it, mm -hmm. and uh, and basically uh, it's it's you know engraved on the outside, and then when you pop it open, you actually see that um, almost like locket style. There is a picture of an older gentleman that uh, you know, based on what he's talked about so far, is likely you know, the pops, uh, that, that, that he's talking about. And, um, and so, um, but basically he, he winds it in front of them there mm -hmm. and then nothing happens with the hands on the watch. But yeah, that's, that's different. Like I, I like pocket watches. I have about 15 more at home, um, wow. but they actually work. I don't know why I took this one actually, but, um, but yeah, that is not the same as what Corey had. So, Maybe Augie, maybe that's like a, you know, pinched Or it could belong gift. to the person whose namesake seems to be depicted on it. Ivy. It was, that's the one. Yeah. And I immediately just start looking around to see if something <laughs> happens <laughs> when he says the name. You're safe. Nothing happens when he says the name. Half expecting. She who shall not be named. Yeah. Half expecting something bad. Half expecting something good. I mean, there's, I'll give you this. There's a little, a little, the wind picks up a little bit. A little chill. Oh, um, 
<laughs> Before I forget, uh, Neb, could I have one of those berries? Just we should leave one for the fairies, just in case. Yeah, sure. Never. And... I, I, honestly, at this point, it doesn't seem to hurt to give no, our abs due. Absolutely. And if I'm assuming I can do this again if I think about it, so. And I've got two more. Two? Okay. Two Maybe next three. time you can think up a roast beef and some uh, mashed potatoes left, or there? something like that. There's three left, and I'm giving you one. You one. So that I have two left. Yeah. Two left. Okay. I'll, I'll try roast beef, maybe uh, turkey or, yeah, <laughs> like a good sandwich. <laughs> sandwich would be good, yeah. yeah. Although I'm pretty full, so. Yeah, maybe so it's so rocket washes. Um, is this to what seems to be the correct time, like versus my phone, is it at the correct time or do I need to set no, it? You'd have to set it, yeah. Okay, I will set it. Are, is there any engraving or pattern? Is there anything if the light catches it? The ivy here? is what's engraved, but uh, go ahead and give me an investigation check for anything further. Okay. 16. As you look closer at the engraving, you can see in the, like, in the cracks, a little bit of what might be green paint, as if it had at one point been painted or stained or dyed in some way, but that over the years, it's been sort of wiped off. But there's just a little bit of residue of that green coloration left. Hmm. Good to know. Which which path are we gonna choose? Well, I, I think we should listen to what Ms. Robin said. Do you agree, Neb? Neb's nodding. Absolutely. Sold. All right. So you, you gather the things that you think that you'll need. <laughs> Others yeah. you, you hide, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the harnesses and climbing gear and so forth are kind of, you know, they're, they're already packed for someone to sort of put on. So, you, you know, each of you could carry one of those. Uh, you have all of your bags and uh, you're gonna head all up along this path that seems to go around the bend of the mountain here. Before so essentially, you're asking out. me to take the high road here. Exactly. <laughs> Before we head out, uh, Silas, just as everybody else mm -hmm. kind of starts up, yeah. Silas is going to take a little piece of beef jerky and just set it next to the berry that Maeve left for the fairies. <laughs> and, yeah. just, and, and he just kind of looks around and then he like <laughs> scampers after the rest of the group. Amazing. I would make superstition. Superstitious uh, folks. Rubbing off yet. on us all now. It's, it's, it's been a whopping day since I've even half believed the stories. Mm -hmm. And yet. And yet here we are. Here we are. Mm -hmm. So as you step onto this path, and it, it does go up a little bit and kind of around, you notice it's quite a little bit of an uphill path, but the way the snow has settled, you can see it quite clearly. Um, you can only fit kind of one at a time in sort of a single file line. Um, I don't, do you mind who goes first? Do you want to call that? Who's ahead? Oh, then Neb's going first. If everybody Neb's going does, first. Yeah, yeah. If there's that hesitation. You got it. Neb, Neb like you're <laughs> leading, leading the charge. Probably Robin uh, close, you know, close behind oh. you since this was her, her uh, suggestion. Mm -hmm. Um, as you come around the corner of this mountain, and again, whipped with a little bit of wind, uh, you make your way around very quickly. As you look up, you see a house sort of nestled into the side of the mountain. Um, as you're going to, you also see also up there is a house up to the other side. It almost looks like burnt earth. So where there could be snow, but this has been kind of, it's all melted away or something. The earth looks bright orange. It looks almost like it's been sort of burnt and, and it, it's all kind of laid out in sort of dug out tiers along the side of the mountain. And at the bottom, someone's dug kind of a trough where you can see snow has collected there and it's even kind of melted a little bit. So there's ice, really more ice and snow and a little bit of water down in that trough. I think there was a forest fire or something. This is this is weird. I mean, can some it, trees require that to grow. Can I tell? Does, does, it, does the how close are we to the, the bright orange earth? Um, it's probably in like 20, 30 feet off the path. Can we tell how long ago it looks like it was burnt? Like, give is me this... a let's see. How about a well? Give me an investigation to start with. Sure. Okay, it's a 15. 15. 
the more you look at it and you think about forest fires and the images you've seen on TV, this doesn't look natural. It, it's it's very clean. Like there are corners, and and the earth has been sort of dug, you know, into these platforms. Um, you even think maybe sticking out here and there, you might see a little bit of plastic underneath. I'll brush away some of the snow and, you know, kind of touch touch it the the dirt and you say, walk over. It's, it's thirty feet away, so you can walk over there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's. I'm assuming that I would have done Nev that. Nev jumps yeah, off yeah. the path, you know, sort of striding Silas through the snow, is which is amble deep. after okay, as great. soon as he realizes that she's doing it again. I, I kind of figured I was going to have to do that to investigate. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. So yeah, you you move over closer. So you want to reach down and kind of touch it. Yeah. Um. And and then show Silas or whoever uh -huh. else has come along, like the corner yeah. and the. the what looks like plastic and say, plastic. I don't think this was a natural forest fire. I don't know what it was, but. Give me a quick perception check. Silas and Neb. Okay. May I go join them, please? You may, yes, may. You can make a perception check as well. That is a zero. Okay. May that I is help the with the perception in a row. check here? Yeah, Thanks you there. can. You want to offer your, your wisdom base to Neb's roll? Sure. Uh, plus one. Uh, that's an 11. An I didn't 11. roll very well. So you kind of nudge each other. You can't identify it, but there's a little smell in the air as you get closer to it. It's not entirely pleasant. Hmm. I mean, the the color makes me. This is the kind of thing that they like hide minds in. Like, I don't know if we need to just be touching things. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just burnt. I mean, haven't you seen those movies? The smell doesn't smell like fire, though, right? Not fire, like no. Else. Does it smell like sulfur? That's what I was thinking. Um, with your zero? Uh, yeah. I started to say that Silas smelled a lot of it in Atlanta, but... <laughs> a lot of sulfur. The, and, and I did I'll, I'll give you this. It, it's not, it's not recognizable. Um, <laughs> if you recognize a sulfur smell, you don't recognize this one. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I can say it, it's more chemically... Ah, uh, and I'll, I had picked up a little bit yeah. and I'll drop it and kind of use whatever snow and yeah. grass is right there to wipe off my hand. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Who would, I mean, I really don't know a lot about this, but it seems weird to find chemicals on the side of a, a mountain that they're mining in. Should we go Does. check the house? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't. The, the house sounds like a much better idea than this. Okay. And then we also need to see if there's a back door into the mine. Does the path continue past the house and the the burnt ground? It appears the path goes right to the house. Ah. It also forks off to the top of this burnt patch of earth. Um, so you could get to the fork. You could either go over to the house or you could go to the left and be at the top of this sort of ramp of burnt earth. You know, now that I've said that, we're already kind of looking at what happened to this ground. Do you want to just go a little bit further down this way and See that check it first? out? Yeah. I'm curious. Okay. I'll sc we'll scramble back, back to up the path. the path. Yeah. Kind of make your way up following it. You know, it, it's, it's, again, it's cold. The snow is deep. Um, you're here, but you make your way up to the top of this thing. It's cold. Quite a ways down. Like this is a good fifty foot sort of, you know, strip of earth. Um, and you can see that definitely up here, a bit more of this plastic sort of underlayment is showing. Um Is it like a a blue tarp kind of plastic? Kind of, or yeah, is it's it... this is it's black. Um, but you know, almost almost as if it was like a giant black hefty bag <laughs> <We're> sort of <laughs> placed and then covered with dirt. Uh, and whatever else is in there making this smell. Hmm. And is there anything at the top of... The, so the path kind of ends mm -hmm. at the top of this... At the top? Um, I'll offer this. Uh, there's a wheelbarrow up there. I'll go walk over to the wheelbarrow and kind of look around. You see, see if there's... dirt and rocks and stone, things like that in the wheelbarrow. More of this red burnt stuff or no this looks more like something that would have been taken out of the mine darker hmm. gray black stone but it's been um 
it's very small, fine pieces. It looks like, you know, not like a big chunk. It's been really crushed and processed down. Is it is it like palm sized? Smaller even. Okay. Practically so, dust. It's practically gravel. Oh, okay. So are there any larger rocks more, you know, baseball, softball size? Sure. Okay. Silas is going to bend down, pick one up. Yep. Line up. And he's going to <gasps> throw it out into as far as he can into like the middle of where okay this thing is. as it lands in the center it kind of you see a little bit of dust sort of you know emanate um in that moment though i don't know how accurate this is don't at me people who know, know things um there's magic a little world. magic world magic world. world magic world don't at me people who know stuff um, <laughs> um there's a little and a little bit of kind of vapor begins to kind of uh, waft up over around this stone that you've dropped in the center. What color vapor? White. White, clear, transparent. Maybe a little bit of a yellowish cast to it. I mean, that doesn't look healthy. No. <laughs> no, especially if we think there's chemicals here. I'm curious if this is a if this is a, uh, explosive. Yeah, that's what I said with the mines. Mm -hmm. I do know that. I mean, well, I, use... I, I mean, there were we're talking about a mine and mines. It's a, a bit confusing what you were talking <laughs> oh. about there. Oh, land mines would have, land minor. qualifier might have made it a bit uh, yeah. more specific, but if I mean, this they... is. They An do explosive. use explosive. It's a yeah. dangerous way to live. Yeah, they have to blast mines, right? I remember yeah. that in video games. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or it's a defensive way to live. Is it surrounding the house on all sides? No, it's it's on the other side of the path. This is you know this is a good like I said, thirty feet from the path, sixty feet from that house. Um, it's its own sort of funky strip on the other side of the mountain. So if a kaiju attacks, this is where we lead it. <laughs> I love it. Well, love it. it's probably worth it at this point to go examine the house. If there's nobody in it, then we can go take a, a look around. If there's someone in it, maybe we can find out if there's someone who can see us. Hmm. Just wondering about the wheel. Silas, Silas starts walking up, up the hill to okay. the house. Silas goes back to the fork and continues up. Feruza and Robin, what yeah. is? Are, are you going straight to the house, or you want to play more with this burnt earth strip of burnt uh, earth? We, I mean, Robin had probably stayed down okay. the path, <laughs> kind of waiting for them. Mm -hmm. Feruza stayed with, you know, okay, with Robin. Leave little Robin there by herself, but she's pretty much <laughs> with Robin. But she's gonna, she's gonna look at Robin and say, "There." Are they, where did, do they go into the into the house or do they go into, did you see where they went? Can we see where uh, You can see went? them, yes. You, you can, can see them, them up at the top, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, you know, they went up a little ways, um, okay. so they're a little so bit far away, but you can still see them. Yeah, okay, yeah they're good. Um, so Silas is just coming down. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's something, it's something super hazardous, like hazmat up there. Don't know what it is. Oh, by all means, let's go investigate. Was that what you guys were doing up the there? Stone, the stone probably landed on the same level as Robin and Feruza, so you really saw it like land, little puff of dust, and then. This what sort were you of doing? You throwing things at us when we're up there? Or yeah, I mean, like most of the time when it's you thirty, to... you know, forty feet away, but it oh, was on, it was on your off. level. Yeah. Okay. Anything Best weird? Just throwing a trap is to throw rocks at it. <laughs> what uh, is um? What's under the plastic? You want to pull the plastic up? Just a little bit. Okay, give me an investigation. Uh, as she picks it up, I'm going to lean on over and I'm going to help. Oh, what's your int bonus? Uh, three. A Eighteen. Eighteen. So as you go down, you look, this is mostly dirt and rock. Um, and, and you do see some tool markings as if they, you know, whoever did this intentionally carved out a section of the mountain 
laid this plastic um, you know, you're, you're really, you know, you're really seeing this as a, a man-made created, I shouldn't say man-made, but handmade created, um, section. This is not natural. Uh, and it was, it was designed. Hmm. What do you think? All I can tell so far is that it was created by a person. It was carved, hmm. carved and designed like this um well maybe maybe the house will give us some more answers i'm just trying to see if there's anything else we heard about the mine lots of tunnels they're gonna burn the dead hollow they are still While she's thinking, I'll look yeah. up at the house. Do do I see any movement, lights, anything that would indicate there movement. might be? It's it's oddly long and thin, and as you look, you see it's got two chimneys. Uh, how many stories is it? One. No windows. One story. No windows. Okay. No windows. I don't know if no. that's a house as much as a. Story. A storage facility or maybe a processing place? I mean it's it's not big enough to really need two chimneys if it's a house. Could Is they everyone be... back together at this point or are they still you can, I mean place? do you want to have started to move yeah, back down, can... Neb and Maeve? Yeah, yeah I, I okay. wouldn't have moved out of eyeshot of yeah. of anybody. So Okay, so yeah, you you as you as you're thinking it over and trying to remember what you know what you heard about the mines, you've made your way back to the group. Um, and you all can start to make your way, continue along the path to come up closer to the structure. Yeah. Miss Robin, do you want to like, I mean, we'll be right here, you know, behind you, but most of the people are probably not gonna, you know, find a, a sweet woman such as yourself very threatening. Um, and, and maybe they won't like try to shoot us or something. Ah. <laughs> I love this idea. Yes, you're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> so, Robin, ahead of you, you do see there's a there's a door, um, and uh, you know there's a, a knob on it, and there's a like a little sort of not a porch, but a, a you know a wooden plank sort of entry area. So you can kind of step off. The snow has not covered that as much as it did the rest of the the land, and you can step up to the door. I'll try the handle. It jokes on it. them because if they attack Miss Robin, she's going to just <laughs> May I hide <laughs> while she does this? You may. Give me a stealth check, me. And I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to be like five feet behind. Robin. <laughs> you got oh. it. 22. Okay. Uh, you are well hidden. You find... Um, you know, if you go down a little bit kind of around the side of the house, there's maybe a scraggly little bush and you, you can get pretty, you know, out of the line of sight of that door. Okay. So Robin, yes, the, the door turns. It's, oh, it is open. It is unlocked. Okay. I'll push it open and kind of poke my head and just have a look around what the, get the lay of the land. Yeah, as you as you push it open and look in, and you see now it is a long, you know, sort of narrow space. Um, you're on the the short end, uh, looking down, almost like a train car, not not unlike that. Um, but as you look in, you immediately see a large, uh, sort of engine, uh, a machine of some kind. Um, you see a a. Uh, in fact, I mean, you actually looked into the the engine cabin. You see what's clearly a, a firebox. It's filled with. Um, you know, charcoal and burnt wood, and then a large water tank sort of surrounding it, very much like a steam engine. There is then a cable that comes out of the ground, hooks onto, <laughs> as Maeve nods her head, hooks onto a bunch of levers and gears, uh, and then goes down into the ground at the farther end. So a good, you know, 20 feet away, it sort of loops up, follows through all the gears, and goes down again into the earth. I'm going to walk on in to give room for everyone else to come in. Come in. It's a real sort of dusty. Uh, it does. It shields you from the winds with a tiny bit warmer in here, uh, but pretty dusty kind of space. Uh, there's a bunch of barrels in the corner uh, and a, a stack of wood. I mean, we could have slept in here last night. Oh. Well, 
we would have needed to come walking we around the been able to see it last night we didn't know it was here oh, by the way Maeve has come out of Maeve the, came out of the, hiding okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hiding. we saw that they weren't attacked by yeah. ice creatures coming yeah. through the door um, <laughs> you were is well, anybody yeah. here Rose just says it out into the house anybody it here it echoes a little bit in sort of the empty you know barren space I wonder if we were to um, I keep vanishing and coming back into reality. It's so <laughs> you're, strange. You're in the other plane with uh, Augie and Lori. <laughs> you're so good at hiding. You're hiding. I don't know why hide. it's doing this, and I'm so sorry. Um, uh, it's just special effects. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Um, it's so annoying. Um, why sorry. is it doing this? Um, uh, but around. I am going to. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, look at the machine that see if if it's something that we think we can maybe get going perhaps if we turn it on we'll get some lights in here as well uh give me a history check see what you know about machine sites and actually you have that book if you want to pull out your book you can have okay. advantage on it okay I will take that advantage and <laughs> use a 22. 22, yeah. As you pull it out and you you know, you know kind of are looking through even just the introductory pages, the pages that kind of give you a sense of generally what is this book going to cover. Um, this is indeed, you recognize it as a, a steam engine, like exactly what runs the train. And that essentially, if you can get that firebox heated up enough to boil the water in the tank around it, it will divert, convert steam pressure to move the pistons and therefore the gears, and it will move this cable whichever direction you choose. Before we do that, though, we should figure out what the other substance is because we don't want to blow up the whole hillside <laughs> first by I accident. Think that, I think that's smart. Also, do we, do we know for sure what this cable is attached to? Do we think it's the elevator inside the the mine or something else is this like the back door so one thing you notice is that the cable you know it, there are two entries into the rock it goes through the floor in two different places um you know one side you know each side presumably is connected to something different hmm. when we had come around this path yes had we gone down or up the mountain or are you we had still gone up okay just uh, a little bit or a significant amount? Um, I mean, what's significant? Um, Enough probably 100 think... feet. You might, okay. have, you might have ascended 100 feet. Okay, yeah. Because Neb is kind of thinking about if this cable goes to whatever it was that we saw on mm -hmm. the inside, like how far would that be? Mm -hmm. And is is yeah. are these connected or is this to something else? So <laughs> she's trying to map out the, the give route me, of cables. Give me an investigation. While she's doing that, is there anything in the book that talks about anything like this yellow powder that I can find? The book. Uh, you do give me an investigation as well okay. for yours. And again, you can use advantage because she's in the book. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Neb. Uh, she's just looking <laughs> at the cables and I'm having that moment in where all the, the numbers are just passing over <laughs> my face, that meme. Uh, I got equations. 23. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, so yes, as you're calculating, you're pretty sure that the, with the trajectory that you went around and came back and came up, that this front, uh, the one closest to you, probably is right above that lift. You're almost oh. positive that this connects to that lift. You have no idea what the other one goes to. But spatially, you're like, oh, if I really think about how we went down around and came up here, you're pretty darn certain that connects. And, and you'll actually all watch as Neb goes, oh. <laughs> what? We, what? Are, we are right above the, the, the elevator in the mine, in the front of the mountain. This, this one has got to be something connected to that elevator. That, that can't be a coincidence. We're oh. like right above it. The cable that Nave saw. Uh, the, this one right here. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that At the back was. of the cave. Yeah. As you go over and look at it closer, you can see that it's it's about an, you know, there's a, a shaft that's about a foot and a half in diameter. And it's real dark going down. You can't see very much there, but the cables just disappear into this foot and a half 
wide shaft. The other one is the same. It is this foot and a half wide dark shaft going into the mountain. Yeah. Who's small uh, enough to fit in that shaft? Just kidding. A, a phone. <laughs> Makes a phone recording with, <laughs> with the light on, uh, perhaps. Just a thought. Uh, well, you're dropping your phone? Is that what you said? Not yet. But possibly. <laughs> I mean, if we could attach it to the cable and use it to, to go look. And you have rope. Use, recording it, recording it. I on wish phone. we knew how these places worked because, like, I don't, I don't know if I'm following. So, this is pulling a like an elevator, like a dumb waiter type deal, up and down. But what is it pulling, and where where does once it pulls up, like where does it go? Well, if we think this is the thing that powers the elevator that we saw in the front of the cave, about mm -hmm. fifty feet in then that elevator is probably what they were using to bring stuff up from the mine. Because remember, they were mining in there. And so eventually they would have carts of, well, originally gold and now whatever they mine now, if anything. But it brings it up into where we were outside looking and then they bring it from there out? I think so, because there were the tracks that they could, if you had a cart that could roll on that and that would eventually get to where the train could park. So if the train pulls up and that wouldn't be that far to load up a train. It makes sense. Okay. It yeah. makes perfect sense. Um, I got a 19 on that. Oh, yeah, okay. and, you're, uh, and remind me, you were looking for... for To see if there's anything about the yellow powder. Oh, the yellow powder, yes. Um, so there's kind of a, a, a footnote um, this is, this is, you know, pretty much an engineering book, so it doesn't get too far into, you know, chemistry or anything like that beyond it. But there is a footnote about, um, you know, the different, the different uses, the different types of machines and engineering you need. And there is a section on mining. Um, and in that, it has a footnote about processing ore uh, to, in order to extract the gold and how there are chemicals that are used in that process. But it doesn't go into great detail about that. Robin, Feruza, anything you're curious about? <laughs> um, I'm actually um, trying to figure out where, like, uh, where Feruza, like, I'm just trying to picture spatially where they yes. are. Like, in the, All right, in so the, we'll do this again. So same room. It's this long, you know, not not quite as long as a, a train, but, you know, you know, it's, it's a narrow space. Right in the yeah. center is this machine. Closer mm -hmm. to one end, there's a a shaft going into the earth. Down at the other end is another shaft going into the earth. There are some barrels in the corner. There's a stack of wood and mm -hmm. you can see a firebox that has all kinds of charcoal and burnt wood in it and a large water tank. Okay. That is and that everyone's... is surrounding that firebox. So you'll you'd put it basically underneath so that the water is surrounded or that the fire is surrounded by water. Okay. Um so uh I see the one sort of dumb waiter yes. pulley, and I see that there's another one in the back of yes. That the, the same back. well, the same cable that rises out of the front one goes through the machinations and then down the other one, and it comes up the other way. It does. All right, so that would mean that the platform is up on the other side, and the it lowered and came up the other one like that, sort of. Am I getting it right? Do you, okay, so let me see if I can help describe again. So yeah. you're pretty sure that the 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 elevator, the mining lift that you saw, yeah. that mm -hmm. the cable that that was attached to rises up through mm -hmm. a very narrow shaft into okay. this okay. building. It then turns perpendicular to the ground or parallel to the ground mm -hmm. through the machinery and then goes down into a second very small shaft. Um, okay. you, that one, you don't know what it connects to or where it goes. Um, but the, the lift appears to be connected by this cable to something else on the other side down another shaft. Okay. But we and do right. not, so given that, yes. we do not think that they operate independently. No, they are absolutely okay. appear to be connected to one okay. another. If one goes up, the other is going to go down and vice versa. And uh, it's, 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 frozen because the engine doesn't work or it just... it's yeah everything you know you, clearly the power for this thing is steam power um power. and so you would okay. need to get that engine Working. hot and running and making steam in order for this to work what else is in this 
longhouse or, or whatever we want to call this, this facility. Yeah, um, so not a lot. Like I said, there's there's the stack of wood and the barrels in the corner. Um, you may be at the far end. Is there anything behind the stack of wood? Um, you want to look? Have an investigation. Yeah, I'd, give it, yeah. I'd give it a look. Yeah, give an investigation. Uh, 16. 16. Um, the stack of wood is, um, there is an axe over in that area in case you need to, to chop it up. <laughs> Faruza, <laughs> would you like another axe? It's not as nice as yours, Faruza. <laughs> <laughs> it's real rusty. Ever heard uh, have a backup? I mean, yeah, maybe why that not? maybe I that's mean... uh, you know, uh an axe for Neb. Didn't she say she wanted oh. Is it a full size Neb? axe? It's a full size axe. How tall is an actual full size axe? It's like three feet long. I will go over and I will grab it and I will like <laughs> keep it on the ground and hold it next to my whole five foot and go, I might have underestimated how big an actual axe is. <laughs> I'll teach you how to swing it. You'll be fine. Hey, trust me. I try, to, I try to pick it up. How heavy yeah. is it? It's not that. I mean, you can carry it, you know, but swinging it's another thing. But, you know, the interesting thing about an axe, which Feruza will tell you, is that it's really much more, it's not about your strength. It's about using the weight and the swing of the axe head, right? Like you're, you're just balance. not, don't get in the way of the axe. That's yeah. how the axe works. Mm -hmm. like I golf, you know. I, th I think it would be a good idea if I wait on an axe that is more appropriately sized. Okay. Uh, but Silas, would you like? No, 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 no. I don't do weapons. I mean, neither do I, but I, I still have a rolling pin <laughs> in go, my what? bag. No, I'm, I'm just, not I'm just trying that... to be... I'm, gonna I'm never going to object to anyone being a pacifist. Um, look, my family was army. Um, <laughs> no objections to anyone not using weapons but we've been encountering plenty of things trying to kill us and defending ourselves in this place may be an important thing to be able to do i am not arguing with any of that i'm simply saying that if i use a weapon to make something bleed in front of me that i don't know if i will be able to like I have crippling anxiety over the oh. sight of blood. And so, oh. um, especially if I put that, like, yeah. right, if I inflict that, um, like maybe I have before at some point decades ago, then mm -hmm. it creates major problems. And I'm talking like, it's like, it's not just a blood bath, it's like a puke bath. Um, oh. and so, uh, so, so yeah, like it, it's not that I don't want to kill the bad guys and slay whatever monsters we're going to find in this fantastical realm. <laughs> I'm simply saying that I'm going to need to find some other ways to do it. He's going well, to disappoint them to death. <laughs> I can disappoint things to death. <laughs> yeah. As we say, you're singing and, and dancing has really been effective uh, thus yeah. far. If you think about it, it's killer. Yeah. Killer moves. <laughs> yeah. Can't it's impressive. Yeah. Understood. So I can, well, then, anyone want this or we can leave it here? I'll take it Robin? for now. Okay. Oh, Robin, Robin, do, you Robin do you want an axe, Robin? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> She's got I her knitting needles. <laughs> She's like, I'm good. <laughs> I love it. Someday I do want to see that list of all of Robin's <laughs> career paths. Her magic Mary Poppins. The resume. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Robin's CV. Yeah. <laughs> years and years from now, and when, <laughs> when, when it's grown and grown and grown, and it includes like a steam power of, of yes. <laughs> operator. <laughs> Having an elevator and operator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a killer, a slayer of ice creatures and all kinds of stuff. Conductor of a will-o'-wisp circus. Yes. <laughs> so, Miss Robin, you've been alive for a long time. Have you seen anything like this before? What? She's old. Well, I mean, I have she's had older many. than any of us, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, this is a little bit uh, above my pay grade. I think mm -hmm. I I would like to say I could help, but yeah, there are some things I suppose I just haven't done before. I don't even know what to but... do with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I like Maeve's idea about sticking a phone on a rope and trying to. Dangle it so down who's going to lose their phone forever? 
Possibly. We have to take that risk, maybe? Is anyone want to... You have two, don't you, Faruza? I have two phones. You're constantly <gasps> bragging about your second phone. Seems the time I to perhaps to... make use of having the spare. In all of this, I'm forgetting everything I have in my <laughs> messenger bag. And she takes one of her phones out. I only know it because you keep talking about how you have two phones because you're so busy. But now, yeah, so I think one. things are changing Ooh, a bit. That's how it is. All it's the part of the firm. The calendar now. Something okay. tells me we are not getting any cell service in this magical <laughs> realm that we've ended up in. No. But our cameras work, don't they? Cameras Pretty work? much. Yeah, I basically, I basically all of the airplane off. mode. <laughs> yeah. So we could pretty much, as long as we can adhere it with duct tape um, to the cable thoroughly, it should, in theory, be pretty okay. well stuck. I like the plan. Yeah. Unless and we have duct tape too now. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, we have duct tape. Don't travel. No. Pro tip, kids: never <laughs> travel without duct tape. Or a million and one uses. <laughs> or a towel. Or, or a towel. towel. I always know where your towel is. Which Silas <laughs> is on it. Silas it has all of our towels. Okay. Did um, somebody who's... need a towel? So, so what, just so I understand what the what the plan that's starting to formulate. Um, you want to duct tape the phone to the cable and then what? Start up the machine to see what happens. Oh, I was thinking duct tape it to a rope and then and lower it yeah right so that way we don't have to game. turn on the machine just yet until we gotcha. know where it goes is just that what you were thinking what's down there yeah so with the camera on and the the flashlight on lower with duct tape a duct taped roped I... phone down the shaft which shaft are you going to do the front one or the back one Ooh, the, i would think the closer one to us right it would be the back well because we're assuming that the front one goes to the the, to the elevator the elevator okay so it would be the back one, the back one? i think but and I also agree. just as we're doing this making sure there's still nothing else in here like nothing no processing things like, um i mean or... it would just be the barrels are really the only thing you haven't looked at yet are those is there anything written on them um not on the front as you can see but you want to give me an investigation check as you take a look at them T-N-T. <laughs> Acme. <laughs> Acme Co. 13. 13. Um, so as you begin to look at them, you don't see anything written. Um, you can, you know, using maybe the tip of your, your letter opener or something, you know, without touching, you can kind of pop the top and you see um, what looks like yellow salt. Um, it and it, it it reminds you a little bit of maybe some of the material you saw on that sort of burnt strip of land. Um, if you would like to try to identify, it would be a history check or you know something along those lines. Uh, any of you have experience with chemicals before I give this a shot? Well, I mean, the 80s were pretty wild, but I don't think <laughs> yeah. it was this kind of... Uh, let's go, let's actually do an investigation. Someone can do an investigation. Uh, Maeve's already done it, but if someone else wants to step in and sort of, you know, check it over once again. I'll um, walk on over okay. and take... Uh, this time, not putting my fingers in it gotcha. and take a look and be like, <laughs> ah, the only chemicals I really know about are the baking kind, but let me see if I can <laughs> take a look. Better than or, nothing. Yeah. Could Robin do a, Go for it. Could Robin do like a history check? Yeah, Robin, you do a history check as well. Go ahead. I love that. Mm. Eleven. Eleven. Eight. What is it, Sorry. Robin? Eighteen. Eighteen for Robin. Yeah. So Neb, as you're looking through and you're kind of, you know, you're poking at it again without touching it, it has that smell that you recognized from out, out front. Robin, as you come closer and look to it, and you start to remember, while you've never worked at mines or anything like that, maybe <laughs> one of your customers at the, the restaurant or something like that told you a little bit about their days as a miner, you're fairly certain that they use cyanide salt to dissolve ore and leach out the gold, which then, as a liquid, runs to the bottom of the leaching field. These are barrels of cyanide. Ooh. Oh, everybody, get get back! Just uh, don't, don't inhale too okay. much. Uh, what is it? It's, it's cyanide. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, that's what it looks like. <laughs> it's what it smells like. It's what she's remembering. Uh, 
All right. Almonds, right? So wait, is cyanide bad? It's bad, right? It's bad. Yeah. Well, I, th but I, I think it's not good or bad. It's how you use it. Yeah. I would like to not use it in my body. So no, I will don't use yeah. it in your, in your food as a seasoning, as a... None of that. So... Well, let's drop the phone and get out of this place. Okay. Agreed. Well, let's say with that, you will spend the next five minutes duct taping Feruza's phone to the end of a rope and begin to pay it off into the so... back shaft. And with that, even... oh, go ahead, me one more runoff, perhaps. Potentially, there would be runoff at the bottom, yes. And that could be what's on the hill, potentially. Huh. Uh, so yes, so that is where we will conclude this chapter of Children of Verte. <gasps> right before you uh, drop the phone down the shaft, uh, and everyone at home, thank you for listening and being with Perfect. us. And please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night.